Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ali Jassim and this is Current Events. Today on Current Events, we will be discussing the International Day of Shiite Rights. And my guest will be Mustafa Akwand, the head of the Washington DC-based organization Shiite Rights Watch. Since the martyrdom of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the catastrophe of Saqifa, the Shiite of the household, peace be upon them, have been disregarded, persecuted, and murdered for their loyalty, doctrines, and religious practices. From the attack on the house of Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her, to the tragedy of Karbala and beyond, all but one of our divinely appointed leaders have been murdered by poison or the sword. Until today, Shiites remain a persecuted minority for their attempts to maintain and spread the pristine Islam of, of the Messenger of Allah Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his appointed deputies. Between 2012 and 2015, in Pakistan alone, it is estimated that at least 1,300 Shiites have been martyred and at least 950 others injured. In the same period, 23 Husseiniyas there were attacked. In the struggle for justice in Bahrain, 550 juveniles have been illegally detained, and dozens of Shiites have been killed or injured in protests, while others have been imprisoned and tortured under the supervision of the brutal Khalifa regime. In Saudi Arabia, Shiites continue to be persecuted and suffer targeted structural economic oppression at the hands of the illegitimate Saudi monarchy. It is the same monarchy that continues to detain the prisoner of conscience, Sheikh Nimr, who is awaiting execution for persistently and courageously defending the rights and aspirations of Shiites around the country. Meanwhile, Shiites in other areas of the world, from Malaysia to Gaza, are also criminalized simply for practicing true Islam, or for attempting to publicly mourn the martyrdom of our master of martyrs, Muhammad Hussein, peace be upon him. In fact, even in certain Shiite majority countries, mourning practices meant to honor al Hussein, peace be upon him, have been banned and scholars are regularly imprisoned and tortured by their supposed co-religionists. And in Egypt, the situation is no better. There, Shiites are banned from constructing their own mosques and Islamic centers and are the subject of attacks by Wahhabi terrorists who, in 2013, shamelessly murdered the outspoken Sheikh Hassan Shahatan as well as four others. Needless to say, in Iraq and Syria, Shiites have suffered heavily as a result of the satanic state who attack our shrines, our honor, our women, and our lives. As if the Shiites of Iraq did not suffer badly enough under decades of the dictator Saddam al-Tikriti. Now, not a week goes by without bombings targeting civilians in Shiite neighborhoods around Iraq. On June 12, 2014, 1,700 students were heartlessly massacred by the satanic state at Camp Spiker, who videotaped their savagery for the entire world to see. This gang of thugs and cowards who have sought to intensify the evil of Saqifa have claimed the lives of countless lovers and followers of the Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them. The list of tragedies goes on and on, and in truth, the followers of the Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, have never been left to live in peace. What we suffer today is what we have always suffered. Yet one organization is trying to change the way the Shia of the world are treated and is aiming to ensure the recognition of our rights and dignity. That organization is DC-based Shiite Rights Watch. Recently, in memory of the 1700 Spiker Martyrs, they have campaigned to set aside June 12th as the annual International Day of Shiite Rights. Shiite Rights was established in 2011. According to their website, they are the world's first independent organization dedicated to defining and protecting the rights of Shiite Muslims around the world. In addition to being a registered non-profit organization in the U.S., it also holds a special consultation status with the United Nations and hopes to draw the world's attention to the plight of Shiites everywhere and to advocate on their behalf. In this episode of Current Events, we will be speaking with the head of Shiite Rights Watch, Mustafa Akwand. We will attempt to address the idea behind the International Day of Shiite Rights and the hashtag 612 Shiite Day awareness campaign. We will examine the events and programs organized for this past June 12th and ask the question, what can others do? and how can they support the international campaign for Shiite rights. Also, we'll try to find out more about what Shiite Rights Watch has planned for the future. So, without further ado, let's meet our guest, Mustafa Akhund. Assalamu alaikum, Mustafa. Inshallah, you're doing well. Welcome to our show. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ali. I hope you and uh, uh, your respected viewer are doing well. Brother Mustafa, I know we just gave a brief introduction of your organization, but can we start off by explaining what exactly is Shiite Rights Watch? Well, the Shiite Rights Watch is a, a non-profit, non-governmental organization who is uh, working on highlighting the violation against the Shia Muslims all around the world. 
try to trying to give them a respect and the rightful of the citizenship in uh, different area and in different countries when did you start and what was your main goal the organization started on February 14 2011 uh, by the uh, unrest that happened in uh, Bahrain our aim was because the lack of the representation of the Shia Muslims in media and the organization our aim was to first introduce the Shia Muslims in right way and uh, do advocacy, raise the awareness and issue reports regarding different countries and the violations that's happening in different countries such as Pakistan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain and uh, uh, all the countries that are oppressing the Shia Muslims. As we have heard recently, Shiite Rights Watch received a special position or chair in the United Nations. Can you please elaborate on that? Well, one of the uh, aim of the organization was to reach the United Nations and be able to work with the different special rapporteurs in different countries and raise the voice beyond the United States. Our headquarters is in the United States and we're working with different organizations here in Washington, D.C. And uh, we were trying to reach the European Union and different countries in Europe and the organization as well. So we uh, applied for the organization to be a, have a special rep, uh, consultative status in United Nations, so give us a better access uh, to the uh, uh, United Nations uh, representative and their, uh, special rapporteurs to be able to reach the uh, Shia voice uh, there. And Alhamdulillah, a couple of months ago, we got our ECOSOC status, which is the special consultative yes, status sure. in United Nations. Uh, Two days ago, and currently right now, I'm I'm in United and Geneva working on uh, our side event regarding the Bahrain. Now back to our topic. What is exactly hashtag six twelve Shi'i Day? Well, we were trying to uh, proclaim a day for the Shia Muslims uh, to represent them and work on different operations that they have. Uh, obviously, religiously, there is a, a lot of uh, international days, religious days that the Shia are representing, such as Qadir or Ashura. But our aim was to represent the Shia in the human rights manner and uh, human rights way. So, uh, 612 was the hashtag that we started, the campaign that we started in Washington, D.C., and tried to re uh, raise the awareness between the NGOs. Uh, communities that uh, are caring about the situation in uh, regarding the Shia Muslims. Now that the awareness campaign is initiated, what is the next step? Well, a couple things that a couple things that we did with this campaign. First, uh, proclaiming the day, which is the 612, and the idea behind this 612 was to uh, find a day that a sad event happened in uh, regarding the Shia Muslims and the largest number of the Shia were killed. 612 was the day between 612 and 615 which is June 12 through June 15 was the uh, the sad event of a spiker that happened and 1700 Shia Muslims were killed by ISIS. So that was the best day to represent the Shia and ask different uh, communities to raise this awareness regarding the uh, uh, spiker and the loss of 1,700 people that nearly is not in media, no one talking about it. So that was the, uh, the reason. And then uh, with the campaign, one of the campaign we did was uh, distributing roses to the communities in Washington, D.C. Uh, each day, we had two days that we uh, work on the, our campaign. Each day, there was a 550 roses that were distributed to the uh, to the people in two busiest uh, place in Washington D.C. and raise awareness. So, with the day 612 is the day that this uh, 1,700 people were killed. But this year, we uh, chose to uh, have a represent a, min a Bahraini minor who are in prison. So the roses was tagged with a with a small card that uh, introduced the 612, 612 day. At the same time, raise the awareness of the Shia who are oppressed in Bahrain. What organizations or institutes support this campaign? We reached a lot of activists, organizations, and uh, NGOs who we thought that 
uh, first we want them to know about this and at the same time uh, we want them to distribute this uh, we had five or six organizations who were co-hosting with our uh, uh, with the Shiara Express regarding this we had the Universal Muslim Association of America we had the Bari Foundation, we had the Muslim for Peace, we had the Free Muslim Association, we had ISWF, which is a Mount Razi Foundation in Washington, D.C., and the others that uh, uh, reached us and uh, helped us to work in this. And we had a couple of European organizations, like the Sentinel, which is uh, based in Ireland, and the uh, Justice for Human Rights uh, that helped us to uh, uh, proceed with this or uh, with this uh, event at the same time we had a lot of activists from Britain from US from Middle East and uh, uh, thanks for Imam Hussein TV uh, three uh, the English channel who supported this and introduced it to the people what are your expectations from the brothers and sisters around the world the expectation is for them to uh, participate in this campaign this is this is not for us to talk about the Shia Muslims it is the responsibility of every brother and sister in different countries. We have a lot of our families are oppressed in different countries, especially in Arabic countries, who uh, are not represented. And we in the West, we have this opportunity, we have this freedom to talk about these issues. So we have to raise awareness. We can participate in the campaigns that is happening. We can participate in social media. And every time we sharing, we uh, retweeting or using different uh, type of the media, uh, social media that we are using, the more we use it, the more we introduce this day to the people, the more they know about the Shia. How can viewers or any of those interested join this campaign? Introducing this uh, campaign, uh, we have, uh, if they are living in the United States, there is a lot of uh, uh, legislative that we are introducing. One of them is the Shia rights legislative that we are uh, introducing. And there is two uh, legislative that is regarding the Shia in Congress right now that need the support of the brother and sister in the United States or they can use our papers and the documentation that we have and the, in, if they are in the western countries they can participate in that go to their prime minister go to their congressman and ask them to protect the shia in, the, in their countries and if they are in middle east they can prepare the videos or they can prepare prepare the uh, paper that introduce the shia in the right way the the lack of knowing of the shia muslim and peacefulness peacefulness of the Shia Muslims is bringing all this oppression. So the more people know about the Shia, the more they know about the beauty of the Shia Muslims, about the peacefulness, about not being violence, the more we can get the support on. Is there any hope of registering this day in the UN calendar? Uh, we are working on it. There is a lot of process that need to be done. There is a lot of uh, introduction that need to be done to get that day uh, in, uh, approved of course the more follower we get the more uh, talking about this in the media happen the more article we submit the more we work in diff we work in different uh, subject of the social media the more attention we get and the UN know that the, this is not the only one organization working on it is the majority of the Shia who are the minority in different countries with the majority of oppression they can get, we get more support and then we get more attention. What are Shia Rights Watch's plans for the future? With the future, we are working in UN regarding that. We are working to get more uh, participation from the different NGOs. We uh, are looking to get uh, more uh, act, uh, activists to join us regarding this. Of course, for the next year, we don't want to talk any, uh, about any sadness that is happening, any loss of the Shia life, but at the same time, we need to get this attention we, uh, to to improve the life of the Shia Muslims in different countries, uh, to get them the rightful of citizenship, the rightful of living in their countries, uh, which need a lot of work, and we are uh, working on it in our organization, and we have very good NGOs who are working with us to uh, to raise this awareness. Do you think such initiatives could help improve the current situations of the Shiite Muslims around the world? Of course. Uh, 
we at, in the organization we try to be creative to bring in new ideas regarding that but of course there is a lot of minorities in the west and in the middle east that are getting their rights they are getting their voice heard this is what we need right now the shia muslim they don't have the voice that they need uh, if we put the religious aside and look at it as a humanitarian uh, aspect of it there is a lot of things that we can do and it is not impossible it is possible what we have to put our aim for it we have to know that we are the peace this is very important you know we see a lot of uh, terrorist organizations such as isis and taliban and all, all these are going against the humanity the only religion who is not raising the uh, raising the weapon and fighting others is the shia muslims we always during the different centuries defending our rights so we have to uh, step up we have to talk to the different organization we have to reach the united nation to get the rights that we need and this is not impossible we have we have seen it with the different faith we have seen it with different minorities in different countries and we can do it inshallah brother do you have a final message to the world it is very important for the viewer of imam hussein tv to know this is not the day that we can be silent. Of course, we don't want to raise our voice with a weapon. With our peace, with our work, with our effect, if we cooperate to each other, if, you, if we unite as a Shia Muslims, we unite as a Shia Muslims to let the world know we are together and we can reach that impossible, we can make it possible. This is the way we can let the other world know that if, if we're looking at the religion, we can introduce our religion. If we're looking at the humanitarian way, we can introduce that. There's a lot of work can be done. We are working with a different newspaper. We are working with a different organization. Anyone who can support us, if they have an, a, any paper that we can support it with, it, if there is any volunteer base that they can support us with, anything that can support our organization, we can reach what we need. This is not our organization. It's every one organization. And this is our responsibility to defend our brothers and sisters who are getting oppressed. Look at the Pakistan, look at Afghanistan, look at Iraq right now. People are dying. We can reach the voice, we can raise the voice, we can get the support we need, but we need to step up. Thank you very much, Brother Akhwan. Brothers and sisters, this concludes today's current events. We hope to see you next time. We thank you all for watching, and we thank our dear guest, Mustafa Akhwan, for joining us. Be sure to join us again on current events. Until next time, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.